In this video then guys, we shall be taking a look at the 2001 sex comedy movie America Pie 2, which is the second instalment in the America Pie franchise. So without further ado, let's get into today's review. Let's get into it. So I thought then that this American Pie sequel was really funny, carried on the terrific work that it did in the original 1999 uh, movie, in which to me is hard to do. And you find in many franchises, big franchises, that the second movie isn't as good as the first movie, or the sequels after so long get repetitive, boring, or don't fulfil what the previous instalments have left, the foundations, and it hasn't carried on the story. However, that cannot be said with American Pie, as American Pie 2 kicks off just where the last one left off and builds on characters, and which is, to me, one of the most crucial things. If a sequel does not build upon the characters from the original or from the previous instalment, you may as well just write that movie straight off, because... If it's not right, and if the character development's uh, not there, you're going to see a difference, a massive difference, because you're just going to be watching crap characters, you're going to be watching a crap story, because you're going to be seeing no development, and that is something that bugs me in certain movies like Jaws 3, that we have covered, so check that out, when a sequel does not deliver due to the fact that it doesn't go off what the originals did and tries to do its own thing and fails. On the character development then, I felt that they really expanded on particularly Jim's character as we f as we find out that Jim at the end of the movie hasn't really moved on at the start of this movie. Uh, he's hooked up with a bird but again, lack of experience, bit nervy, bit, bit awkward around girls and stuff and hasn't really picked off um, in a good light. He's still the same Jim. However, throughout the course of this movie, we, we definitely see him being quite childish, same old Jim, until at the end of the movie where we see him having the choice between Nadia and Michelle. In which Nadia, you would argue, is, is probably what Jim would have chosen in the first movie, a really nice looking girl, uh, probably not going to be a full-time relationship, just a chance to go with her for a while and, you know, have the time that he should have had in the first movie, have great sex and stuff like that, but he didn't have, he didn't choose that because he was more sensible and thought about the long-term future with Michelle and that they actually liked each other in different ways. She, he found her funny, she, she, they were getting along quite well and that was the difference between the relationship in this movie compared to the last movie, is the last movie him and Michelle weren't really gelled they were just put together because they were the last ones left out of the class and they just went together basically. However, this time round, it is completely the opposite. They want to be with each other and when Jim had the choice between Nadia who is like love interest in the first movie, he then suddenly went, fuck that, I'm going with Michelle because Michelle actually cares for me, helped me out to try to get better at the, the, the sex and the love sides of things so I think that element of things really paid off and it showed the character development what they tried to do in between uh, the first movie and this one in which were really really powerful and really really good on the character development I also thought Oz and um, Heather's relationship was really good as well as to me this movie just shows how much of a struggle long term relationships are but in this movie they showed that it can work and that when Heather and Oz, um, at the start of the movie, you think that they're living in the same place, but then obviously they're, they're in two different university colleges and that they're coming back to each other when the end of the summer comes and things like that. And I thought that was quite interesting as it discovered and recovered this element of their great relationship that we saw in the first movie and showed their actual love with each other in their relationship and their development because Oz is tested as well by Stifler to, to, to see if he wants to cheat on his bird and that sort of thing and he, he stays faithful and there's several opportunities where Oz could have gone with somebody else and whatever but he doesn't. Another relationship I want to talk about and this is the best character development I think in the whole movie and that is between Kevin and between Vicky's relationship in which is very weird and special at the same time. 
as at the start of the movie it is very fucking awkward and i mean very fucking awkward because kevin thinks he's still got it in his mind and he's still putting it in his head that he's still with vicky that sort of thing and he goes in for a kiss and then vicky's like well what's happening here we're meant to be friends now and and then he goes oh yeah it's a friend's kiss and then she's like, i'm not sure about that and that to me just shows is their relationship going to break down after this is it going to be a sour ex sort of thing however they managed to patch it up and become proper friends in that scenario but you can see that kevin isn't quite sold on it and we see that when vicky brings her boyfriend to the end uh, near the end of the movie to stifler's party and we're seeing that kevin still hasn't gone over the fact that vicky has got another fella and soon after when we see that vicky um is a bit disgusted why kevin turns around and goes who's he sort of thing and she's like oh it's my boyfriend that sort of thing upsets kevin a little bit and i think that was great as it showed that kevin weren't over vicky yet kevin weren't ready to see vicky with another boyfriend or a date and i think that was special even though they managed to patch it up afterwards that little seed was like a bit of jealousy in there which i liked before i move on to uh, some of the other points i want to make before we wrap up is that stifler is the heart and soul of american pie and he was hilarious and on point carried on from the first movie yet again and, he, and really i think he's what makes american pie so funny because Jim doing what he does is, is hilariously funny, don't get me wrong about him being glued in this movie. But I think Stifler, just the, the one-liners, the, some of the funny elements that he says and does, is hilariously funny. And to me, without Sean William Scott's Stifler, I don't think American Pie would have reached the heights. And I think it definitely, if it didn't show in the first movie, it definitely did in this one. Moving on as well, I also enjoyed the soundtrack. And to me, I always say that a soundtrack makes or breaks a movie, as you can send it to a whole new level if they get the soundtrack bang on. And that's what American Pie has done so well in the first one and in the second one. Getting this sort of like this pop punk vibe going on with the likes of Blink-182 and the likes of Alien Ant Farm and the likes of uh, the Lemonheads. I think those sorts of bands and things like that really help move the story along quite well in this great flow it's, it's obviously pop punk is a mix of the end of the 90s and the thousands the early thousands i think that really gets to show on screen some of the songs used in there were brilliant like some miss robinson obviously used in the first one as well i also thought the likes of smooth criminal when jim's on the roof with his hand on his dick i thought that was great um and i think the, also the likes of be Like That by Three Doors Down and Everywhere were also really good tunes on there as well to, to express the emotions in certain scenes as well. The final thing I really want to mention is the actors and actresses. There's no movie without the actors and actresses and I think they did brilliantly in this movie as I think the likes of Jason Biggs, Sean William Scott, Shannon Elizabeth, Alison Hannigan, Chris Klein, Tom C. M. Nicholas, Natasha Leon, Tara Reid, Mina Savari, Eddie K. Thomas, Chris Owen and E. Eugene Levy were all amazing in this particular movie. To summarise the second instalment in the American Pie franchise, I do believe this is hilariously funny. Maybe takes it up a notch in terms of funniness and character development, but I do believe it is on level with the original American Pie. Hence why I rate this movie an 8.9 and a classic film. So let me know down in the comments down below, please, whether you agree, disagree. Is it good? Is it bad? Is it crap? Is it absolutely the best film ever made? Let me know down in the comments down below, please. Also, if you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, please, because we have noticed not enough people have been subscribing. So hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell and i shall see you guys in the next one layers